doing this interview series is to uh, spread awareness for one on the powerful effects of yoga and meditation and and what it can do for our little our young people our children that have experienced many different types of trauma that have experienced neglect that have experienced dysfunctional homes that have certain diagnoses that you know unfortunately they disassociate with their bodies and they're disconnected from their bodies and and actually when we when i say those things for adults we find that really difficult to comprehend what that means and it's actually a, a fundamental aspect of our our daily world is knowing is knowing our body and connecting with our body and understanding our body and it's something that subconsciously happens so the reason i'm wanting to interview adults around this that have been through it or that care for children that have um that have these disassociation is issues or body awareness issues or body connection issues is to bring language to those experiences so i'm happy that michelle is here and Michelle is a mum of two, so we've got uh, Michelle is a mum of Jaden and oh Bailey. Jaden and so Bailey is seven and Jaden is five. And yes. so the topic today is medical trauma. Now, when I when I usually say trauma, medical trauma is one that people don't really think about, and it's really one that is is just as serious and just as impactful on these young bodies and young minds. So Michelle, Michelle's young boys have many, many medical interventions and it really has impacted them greatly. Um, and I suppose I'll now let Michelle share with us, I guess, uh, I guess her journey through that with her boys and, and what the boys have, have experienced through that. So. Michelle, when, when did all of the medical interventions begin for your two boys? What did that look like for them? Um, probably, well, obviously Bailey started first because he's the eldest. Um, so when Bailey was about 12 weeks old, um, he was five weeks preemie, um, but when he was about 12 weeks old, he just would not stop screaming. It, he screamed from the minute the day started and he screamed the whole way through unless you were giving him solid compression on his stomach and his body um, in a wrap mm -hmm. or you were constantly, like there was constant movement. Um, he was really struggling to attach and to eat um, and <clears throat> just in so much pain. So mm -hmm. I guess it started because he then got really sick. He got a chest infection and stopped eating altogether. So we ended up in hospital for that reason. Um, but whilst we were doing that, they, what happened was is they put a nasogastric tube in because he wasn't eating, so they needed to feed him. Um, but that caused trauma because um, we've now been working really hard and identified that Bailey has a high sensory um, disorder whilst looking at um, other aspects as well um, in the autism scale and um, as a result of that he stopped eating altogether wouldn't attach we mm -hmm. tried feeding um, special nozzle special spoon type feeding um, and he just wasn't engaging at all so um, <clears throat> the trauma started with the nasogastric tube because he would just rip it out. And the process to put in a tube, um, if you're not, you know, you're watching, they wrap them and they, you know, hold their head. And so it's very restricting. Um, mm -hmm. And then obviously the in. Um, <clears throat> as a parent, we also got asked to try what a nasogastric tube was so that we knew what the experience was for them. Um, it's not comfortable it feels like you have um a hard lolly stuck in the back of your throat basically because the tube is always there um and i have my four-year-old here so you're probably going to hear him too oh my five-year-old he's just turned five um and so <clears throat> a lot of the medical trauma was around that um we tried him on a whole heap of different formulas and he was hemorrhaging because they had protein content in it um and so we ended up, I ended up having to go off most foods and having a fruit and veggie rice diet um, so that I could express milk to feed him through the tube. Um, and it probably took 18 months worth of 
solid um, occupational and speech therapy to try and get him to want to chew, to want to use his mouth. He didn't like texture. He didn't like anything like that. Um, and um, But he still was struggling to go to the toilet and he was still in a lot of pain when he was eating. Um, and particularly when he had any protein sources like eggs or meat or anything like that, he would hemorrhage um, from his bowels. Um, and through all of the medical trauma and, and I was requesting a uh, scope both ways and that wasn't something that they were interested in doing. Um, so, you know, Bailey would pull out a nasogastric tube anywhere between two and three times a day um, and it, you, it, I can do it really quickly now. However, it's still a process that you'd have to go and take them to the hospital. So it's, you know, three times a day going in and getting it replaced, having tape oh. and, you know, everything attached. Um, and then I met a beautiful doctor um, by the name of Dr. Cle or Professor Cleghorn down um, at the Marta Hospital and he didn't hesitate and did the scopes and we found out that Bailey's... Um, bowels which is what I'd been you know saying there's something wrong in that area he just wasn't tolerating the protein and he was hemorrhaging and um you know in a lot and a lot of pain so uh Jeffrey put in a gastric um belly peg um and since then there's been a lot less trauma because that generally stays put um and we've only had to replace it a few times um and <clears throat> I guess during those processes the things that helped um, when Bailey was so distressed was utilising the allied health services. So the yoga therapy, the music therapy and the dog therapy that they had coming into the hospital on a regular basis. Yeah. And that would take them out of the, the room that they were stuck in, out into an environment that wasn't medically based. And that also mm -hmm. um, music therapy and the yoga breathing techniques and things when we were having blood tests, when we were having to change a tube, you know, anything that we were having to do um, because Bailey um, suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder from it. So <clears throat> I guess, Michelle, if I can stop you there, probably what you've given light to is that these procedures started occurring while Bailey was 12 weeks of age and from from 12 weeks there's been severe impacts and uh, noticeable impacts on his ability to I guess function in certain situations so I think when we consider ages and and when you know trauma can start occurring for these children we don't really um, some people don't take it too seriously the younger they are however it's it's actually more important win those, you know, core developmental years, which is under three years of age. So I think that's what you've given uh, a really great insight to is that it started at 12 weeks of age and he is he's severely impacted by what happened to him. Mm. Yes, he is. And we use a lot of, um, you know, our compression shirts and jewellery and weighted blankets and uh, noise-cancelling yeah. headphones to help manage day-to-day -day with interactions with people um so, so michelle you know, that, where, where do you find sorry where do you find um where his triggers start to um come into play so where where do you feel his anxieties increase and and he really becomes quite distressed as a result of those experiences um so when we're going, when there's a change in routine of any description, Bailey really struggles to cope with that. So going, for example, going from holidays back to school or going from school to holidays, it's a massive change to routines. Um, I find it <clears throat> escalates quite significantly if we have to go to hospital. Um, say we're going in for our checkups or anything like that. He's constantly worried about... Are they going to do a blood test? Are we having a blood test today? Are they going to do anything? Mummy, are we just talking? So he gets quite anxious around anything like that when we're going to the doctors. So there's always the questions about, am I going to be harmed? 
is somebody going to touch me? Are we just going to have a conversation, mum? What's the whole purpose of our trip? Um, and I guess the trauma comes in when some form of medical intervention needs to be made, whether it's a blood test, whether we have to go into hospital, um, x-rays, anything like that. Um, we find that he ends up having a, a meltdown um, as a result of that fear, I guess, um, and the anxiety that. Yeah, and what does a meltdown look like for Bailey? What do you see for him? He starts off looking worried and then it escalates mm -hmm. very quickly to aggression for him. Okay. So he goes from being okay and you could say something like, would you mind putting your socks on? And that's the last trigger for him. And it just escalates and it can go for hours um, where he um, – doesn't know what to do his body just wants to lash out at everything and right. that is traumatic for everybody um and mm. so <clears throat> because i have a younger child and a dog to keep them all safe we you know separate into safe zones and you know it takes quite some time with you know trying to get bailey to be at a point where he's willing to accept the things that help him so have the weighted blanket, use his headphones. Um, and so he gets very distressed and it's very hard to watch him, you know, screaming at you that, you know, mummy, don't do that. I don't want to go to school. You know, anything that, that has caused him distress. Um, mm. And, you know, you know, because I'm the one that generally is taking him to those things, he gets, you know, <clears throat> or he starts begging people, you know, please, yeah. please don't do Please don't do that, you know, that type of thing. So, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I guess okay. His, his reaction is aggression. Yeah, and okay. Um, yeah, and that's a really, it's a, a common reaction, isn't it, when our, you know, our fear response kicks in and survival mode kicks in and we've identified a threat and that, you know, all we want to do is survive and that's uh, when we feel out of control, you know, these children that have experienced trauma, when they have zero control over their world, um, they will do whatever is necessary and often it's seen as aggression and uh, we really need to understand that aspect that it's not aimed at us um, and and that it really is what's going on inside of these little bodies and these little minds uh, so I guess when you were in hospital and they started talking to you about yoga therapy um, had you any idea of what type of work that would be or what that meant no we just um we're advised that the, a yoga therapist came in once a week um, or twice a week and we were able to take them to a separate room. And a lot of the times we were on our own. Not a lot of parents um, brought their kids in to engage, but we would sit there and we would do it together. Mm -hmm. um, and the, you know, the yoga teacher was very calm and um, very, um, you know, when she saw that it was something that was scary for him um, or for either of them, you know, we'd bring out feathers and um, breath expansion balls and, you know, like things to make it fun and exciting. And she realised that Bailey loves animals. So then everything was around making animal movements and animal um, positions and things like that. So, um, okay. yeah, it was, it was and <clears throat> never like not discussed about what the benefits were or how it would help. However, it was more of a, this is an activity that is offered. You're welcome to utilize it. And I think if parents understood the benefit and the significance of just learning to breathe has mm -hmm. for a child with anxiety or a child with fear-based um, responses, it's significant. Yeah, yeah. So when did you, how far into doing that did you see it actually helping Bailey or where you could actually uh, suggest those exercises to him and he would take it on board and he would use them? Um, was, was there a difference instantly or did it take some time? I guess we probably, when we have been in hospital, it's been for, you know, minimum of two weeks to a month so 
whilst we're in there, you notice the difference from when we first go in and how he interacts with the staff and how, you know, we really have to work hard to work around our pediatrician. This is our pediatrician's, you know, helper because there's a lot of medical trainees and things like that. So there's a lot of different faces. So it really helped when she would come into his room and they would do it on the floor and stuff. And then we were able to continue doing that when he felt overwhelmed and he would go and hide or, you know, pull away from the staff. So I guess I saw benefits because then we were able to use the feather because she would leave items like balloons or feathers that we could use so that if he did feel overwhelmed, we could get the feather and he could blow it up and see how high he could keep it and, you know, to kind of distract him during those moments. Sure, yeah. And I guess um, have there been times uh, where you've either forgotten to do it or remembered afterwards or, or any times where he's requested those activities too because he now knows it makes him feel a little bit better? I guess when they've been away sick and mm -hmm. we've we booked in to do something mm -hmm. and they're away, a massive difference in how he, he he is in himself. Um, he's a he is a lot more distressed, so that aggression comes out quite significantly. Whereas when yeah. the music therapy yoga therapists they are, you can tell the difference because he can see them and he knows them as that relationship. Um, mm -hmm. I guess when he is. When we, when we have it actively engaged in our routines, you see the benefit. When he's not coping and we are unable to do those things, um, you definitely tell the difference between calm, managing to two to three meltdowns or more a day when we just he just is engaged in that stuff or doesn't want to. Um, and then we get back on track and he... You know, he realises, oh, hang on, I didn't feel like this yesterday when I did this. So, you know, but we do engage the yoga breathing quite a lot to try and help him calm down. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably something that we utilise significantly because they taught him how to breathe properly. Sure, sure. Okay, so I guess maybe you've just answered it, but your biggest takeaway and, and what you use within the home would be mainly around the breathing exercises. Yes, and also we go to the zoo a lot. So we were able to correlate different positions and things that we've used with the animals that he loves the most. So he has a love of birds. So we do a lot of the movements of like the eagle and, you know, um, and shooting warrior and that type of thing um, because he's protecting them from um, poachers and things like that. So you know, we can bring those things back in. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, and I guess, is it, um, is it something that you need to do daily with him or it's just when he escalates? What do you find works best? I guess if he was willing to, every day would be beneficial. Um, but we tend to, however, we tend to do it when he has had lots of meltdowns. So if his day's been chock-a-block because then he finds it really hard to go to sleep. So utilizing them before bed on our mattress that type of thing to try and help him just calm down sure. um, before we yeah. put the blanket on and stuff yeah okay and I guess for for parents or carers out there Michelle who have you know children that have experienced medical trauma or any type of trauma uh what what would you say to them if they're thinking about using yoga therapy or they're thinking about seeking a yoga therapist or a service like kids yoga therapy, what would you suggest to them? I would suggest that they get involved with their children or their care, the children that they care for. I think it's really beneficial because then you're able to um, demonstrate and make it a fun activity rather than it being, you need to do your yoga right now. It becomes a family environment where you can all participate and, Everybody knows what you're doing and you're able to help and, you know, set little challenges. Okay, hold that. How long can you be a statue for? And you're doing it at the same time, which is what the benefit 
is from for me is that it then creates a family activity that is less stressful and then we're back to kind of getting that calm zone happening so I think the biggest thing is at the start I didn't like they were just doing it together but then I wasn't being taught the move so then I couldn't provide that same level of support um you know that we we needed so I think engaging with the yoga therapist and your children that you're caring for um so that you can come up with a routine that works for you as a family that you can engage with them on I think that's really important yeah I'm glad you've raised that actually because um, within all of my sessions and, and especially the in-home packages, I'm always working with the parents or carers to make sure that they understand what they need to do after the program is finished because essentially the child wants to learn from you. They want to interact with you. I mean, sure, they might have a really wonderful and fun time with Jess, you know, the yoga teacher that comes in. However, you know, their connection is with you and, and you are the one driving um, all of the healthy behaviors and they're modeling from you and they want to bond with you. So um, you're right. I think uh, it can really, it turns into an amazing family bonding activity that calms you down as well. If you're doing the breathing too. Um, and obviously having that impact on the children. So it's, it's, it's a wonderful moment and it shouldn't just be focused on the child. It should be, it should be a family a family intervention really so that you're all left with strategies and techniques that you can do together um, if you don't have access to that yoga therapist within the home all the time. Um, yeah. So, yeah, thanks for highlighting that. Yeah. Um, so I guess that's, uh, that's, all the, that's all the questions that I had for you. I appreciate you coming and spending your time with us. It took us a while, but we got there. <laughs> Is there anything else that you want to add, Michelle, for any parents or carers watching about medical trauma or anything that you feel is important to share from your perspective or your children's perspective? I guess one of the biggest things is that um, the allied health services that are offered that are extracurricular, like the yoga therapy or music therapy, they are supported by parents and children who participate in it. So there's no participation in those um, services that provide the trauma relief because really that's what it is. It's about providing relief to the children from what they're experiencing internally. Mm -hmm. Those services cannot be offered. So when we are engaging those services, it's really important to um, be open and honest with the practitioner that you're working with so that the relationship can be built and they can continue to offer the services for the children who don't have a voice for themselves. Um, and I guess on a number of occasions, those services have almost been lost um, because there's been no funding and the funding comes from the parents and the families and the community around us. So I guess it's about sharing the word and sharing the understanding of what it does for our children, um, not only here in the home, but at school as well, um, and in, in everyday interactions. So I guess that's probably something I feel passionate about is that it's a service that is always on the edge because it needs community support because it's not a funded activity. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think um, when, we're, when we're in that medical world, you know, I've worked in hospital previously as a social worker. When we're in that medical world, um, unfortunately, we often get led towards all of the medical uh, services and things like yoga therapy and music therapy and, and the other allied support services are just as, if not more, beneficial and effective for these little children and, and adults too, actually. Um, and I think when I, when I started kids yoga therapy, you know, I was, I was shocked that actually nobody else in Queensland or in Brisbane really was, was focusing on children and, and trauma and, and really trying to um, help heal their little minds and bodies through the body therapy, which is, which is yoga and meditation and really trying to come at it from, um, I guess, where the child's development has been uh, stunted or disturbed or, or affected really. So um, this work is definitely very important and, uh, and one, it should be supported. You're right. Um, so I yes. definitely hope that all carers have 
um, yeah, we'll start sharing a lot more and, and have gotten a lot out of your message and your sharing today. So thank you very much. No worries. Thanks for having me. No worries. Thanks, Michelle. And if anybody has any questions for Michelle or for me or about the Kids Yoga Therapy packages or what it means to be involved, anything at all, you just need to post your questions below and uh, Michelle and I will definitely make sure that we see them um, and I'm sure that Michelle's happy to engage with anybody and, and I am too. So thanks all for definitely. watching and enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Thanks, Michelle. No worries. Thanks, Jess. Bye. Bye.